Hello, welcome to another sim release. We're up to 0.55b, getting closer to the eventual 1.0 release when it will be sort of done in terms of like the initial features I set out for. Um, but in this one, if you remember last time, I, I did a survey and people wanted an extra level and this is what I've done. Um, I've created a city level and it's mainly thanks to you guys that bought it on Steam and my Patreons because they provided enough money for me to go out and actually buy an asset. I'm using something called Seascape. It's a procedural city generator and that has really helped me because as people will know, I think, that's looked at the sim, I, I can't draw and I can't do 3D models um, and thus anything I can do to shortcut that and help me get some assets in is really handy. Uh, there's a couple of others I, I got as well which I'll be doing in later level updates hopefully. So let's jump into the sim and I'll show you what we've got. As per usual here I've already got my radio sorted out so um, here's the front end of the sim. It's just some slight changes. I've moved the play quad ball up here so I could put the level down to sort of what we are on the regular start sim button. And the sim would start up as normal, you'd go in, you'd uh, you'd fly around, you'd you know do whatever you like etc. Um, and if you want to change level, uh, as, you, as you might have guessed, there's a button here that says change level. We're currently on the original level. I couldn't think of a snappy name for it. Desert Mountain? I don't know. Anyway, let's click on that and we should be taken to the city level. Takes a few seconds because there's stuff to load and essentially the interface should be exactly the same. So all the main menus the same, you can you know go in and change your joystick and all that gubbins and then you can you can start playing. So let's show you very quickly what we're dealing with. So we start off in the sim in this park which is your sort of landing reset area if you like and we are kind of in the middle of a 10x10 10 10 city block. It is very much a sort of straight line thing. If you've ever been to sort of Manhattan, New York area, you will know about city blocks. Everything is literally uh, in straight lines. There's a nice river running through it. There's a kind of central area over here where we've got the, the big high rises. Uh, but yeah, it's it's not a, a fan of curves. It's it's all about the straight lines. But there's lots of obviously big buildings to dive down, uh, get some nice gaps going around, uh, bits and pieces like that. When you get to the uh, river You've got some bridges there, so you know you can play with going over uh, and under the bridges, do a few little power loops and things like that if you want to, uh, and basically have some fun. That's the, that's the main point of it all. But there are a couple of changes uh, that the city level has, which the main one doesn't. One of which is the the weather effects. I I kind of there's there's two things about this. First off, um, I've worked quite hard to try and optimize this as as much as I can so it will play still on low-end systems because obviously there's lots of geometry going there. Um, I wanted to go a little bit into about how I use Seascape and, and what sort of things I did because there was very little documentation about it. I, I'm not going to do that now because I've still got a problem with it. I, I'll come to that later. But yeah, one of the things was about not overloading it with extra things. So in this city there's extra post-processing effects you can put on to make it look more realistic. All these sort of drag the frame rate down. I could put street lamps in and have sort of roadside trees and stuff. All that would add extra things to it. So I'm trying to keep that as a minimum. But what there is, is instead of having um, a weather effect that, you know, some people could use with higher end systems, uh, we've got in this one a time uh, based effect. So we can basically drop our virtual sun and see how that affects things. And what's good about it is it, there's no extra processing power used in this. So this is uh, done by using T for time of day and we can press it and you'll see the, the sun drop down a bit or indeed you can just use the quick menu and click on it and you can see how the sun drops and the lights change. And as it gets lower in the sky, uh, aside from the, the type of colour of the rays changing, you'll see the lights go on. So once you go to night you will find out uh, the lights have, have gone on in the city. Uh, basically, we've got a night flying scene and we can we can do all sorts of things with the quad. Uh, things you probably wouldn't be able to get away with in real life, like flying around. I don't think you'd be able to fly around the city anyway, but even more so at night, I feel. But um, I felt that was that was quite good fun and uh, let, lets people mess around without doing anything else. 
and we can go complete blackness in the sky there so absolutely no residual light other than what you've got going there. Now if what about putting this sort of system in the main game at, at the moment we've got you have weather effects or you don't there's a little bit of stuff to, to do around this. Um, first off yeah I can put the weather system into this one for people that got high spec machines they can have all this and clouds and rain and whatever as well um, which you know I may come back and do and I kind of want to put that time of day into the main thing there's a slight incompatibility between where I am now in the main level because it used something called a skybox which if you've noticed these wispy clouds in the sky that is a skybox it's basically a large 2d image that's rotated around to give the impression that there's stuff in the sky. This, you'll notice, just has sort of a, a gradiated scale and that responds to the fact that we can drop the light. A skybox does not. So it's like we lose the clouds, we gain the ability to change the light. So it might be something I come up with later. Something else that had a little couple of changes was the scenarios menu. Uh, again, you can use the quick menu or just hit space. Uh, the scenarios menu is where you can change your model or uh, do some chases and the, the the models are actually the same so we can we can use the plane it's it's quite uh, an interesting takeoff it's an even more interesting landing when using the plane but we don't normally get to do that much uh, proximity on a plane so it's kind of interesting about what you can do it all the normal controls are there uh, we can also use the car and the car of course has got the FPV mode where we can look around if we want to and and do that sort of government so that's stuff's normal where it changes is if we do chase. So for starters, on the car part, you notice I've only got two courses instead of three. Two reasons for that. One is um, all the blocks look much the same. Essentially, you've driven down one block, you can drive down them all. Also, it's really difficult to get cars through. Um, and this is why you'll notice the speed is missing. So if we go and say we want to drive three cars and we want to do round the block. So we get our normal cars, going along. I was going to take the sort of the dust effect of the desert out but I kind of like particles. I'm figuring it's a dusty road. Now you will notice we've got quite difficult turns uh, with the cars and I can't get them to make the turn if I get them any faster and I kind of thought well do I spend more time rewriting the code to say hey look I can make the cars go around the corner or do I just want this as a bit of fun and, and put my time into developing the quad aspect of it more instead of being like a car chasing simulator. Um, and, and ditto on the plane. I really like the plane courses we came up with. I came up with three courses because the, the, the planes were completely different. We had all that space to fly around and all the buildings to fly through. Um, the, the, the big one's called the Vomit Comet. Uh, and this is because anybody on the plane I, I could imagine was throwing up. Again we've taken speed out. When we're talking about um, trying to fit through the gaps that we've told the plane to fly through um, we, we, can't, we can't make it happen. The, the way this works in code is I have a bunch of waypoints that the plane will fly to but it's not a case of like fly to this waypoint then hit that and fly to that waypoint. It never actually reaches the waypoint because what it does it looks ahead of where the path would be and this allows it to smooth out so instead of having very robotic looking points do we go point to point to point um, because it always looks ahead it turns it into curves and that is a problem when you're trying to fit through very tight buildings like this if we were going faster we still rely upon putting virtual inputs into the plane and the plane just cannot turn that quickly in order to miss the building so basically it hits the buildings but yeah that's there and you know you can put any of the combos in you can you can chase the planes as a quad or a plane or even a car you wouldn't see it you can change it from you know day to night or, or whatever you want really so that bit's all there uh, you can still do line of sight flying if that's what you want you'll take paddocks in the in the park obviously you need a, a keen eye to not hit the buildings there but that's there most importantly with this new level you can play it online as well so now you've got the choice of where you play so if we head to the online section here and join the lobby you should notice two things here's my my other system called wayne's world it's playing the city you've now got a drop down here for the map so you can say the original or the city when you create a room um, or you can obviously 
join the room in progress. Which won't look very exciting at the moment because it's just me on the same computer um, with a, another window with that other quad set on the red thing. So yeah, we've got uh, the normal four people and you can play a mix of quads or planes or, or do whatever, just, just as per normal, so places to chase around and stuff. A few other fixes as well, one of which was about if you start the sim in game, which was doing weird things. Although this is something I'm probably going to take out in the next release because I don't think it's really relevant to start uh, in game now because it's, it's kind of changed from where it was at the beginning. Um, the other more of the major changes I did was someone reported an issue playing a 4 free aspect ratio with very low resolution. He noticed when he was doing a roll, as it came around, the, the sort of middle of the screen would sort of stretch out in an almost shearing motion. And I'd kind of built this round a 16-9 aspect ratio. Um, I did test it in 4.3, but as soon as you drop the resolution, it becomes more pronounced. So what I've done is a fix there. So if you're playing in 4.3, the virtual sort of simulation of the camera sensor would change, and that puts things in a sort of better perspective. So there you go, that is the city level. I hope you have lots of fun with it and obviously report back if you've got problems or you know you can tell me if you like it as well if you want to. Now next I was going to do the rewrite of the fixed wing dynamics so you'd get a better plane experience but uh, if you've been following me on Instagram you will probably notice me testing this out on my phone because what I wanted to do having just put the city level in there and went through several iterations trying to optimize it for the best performance I thought will this work on a phone okay? The answer is yes. However, there is a problem with Seascape on an iPhone. Basically, all the textures get stripped away. It's either a problem with the way the textures are compressed and then put in this uh, weird 2D texture map array, or it's a problem with the shaders on later versions of iOS. It was tested back originally when the asset was released, but now it doesn't work. I've been emailing back and forth with the creator uh, and developer of the asset to try and figure it out, which we haven't done yet. And it has been hours and hours of spending time experimenting with this. Um, it's not that it sort of takes hours to change things. Sometimes it's like a change of a couple of lines, but the the build process to put it on a phone, well, on an iPhone specifically, is really annoying. You have to build it in Unity, which takes a while. Then that goes into Xcode, which is the, 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 the Apple ID that runs on a Mac. Um, in order to deploy it on an iPhone, you have to get a signing certificate, and every time you build it, you have to click loads of things and say, this is my certificate, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. And then that eventually will write itself out to your own iPhone, where it will stay there for several days until it expires again, and then you can test it. And so far, the testing has revealed that it's not working. As far as um, the performance go on, on an iPhone XR, it runs really well. It's running at 60 frames a second. I've put the touch interface in so you can use your thumbs. Um, I didn't like the idea of having a touch interface, but I figured if it was going to go on a phone, then it, it needs something because if you did want to play it out and about, you're less likely to be carrying around a controller with you. So surprisingly, you can you can fly around quite happily and it, it works quite well if you drop the rates down. It's rubbish for precision. So if you're trying to play quad ball using your thumbs on a phone, it's like, well, good luck. Um, I took a long time and I got sort of to level nine and it's sort of, I know what I'm doing. I can I can whiz through the game really quickly and that was that was hard. But yeah, generally flying around is absolutely fine. Of course, it's much better playing with a joystick and if you've got an Android device, you can actually hook up like a proper radio uh, via an OTG cable. I've tested that out and that works quite well. So I will be putting my efforts into getting a mobile version together because I'd already done enough work so it's not that far to complete the sort of touch interface I just need to do some other things also I, because I've been putting so much time into this I've kind of been neglecting other things so I've got you know some projects that uh, were on the go from months ago some reviews to do essentially I'd like to go outside and fly some more so yeah nothing new going in it will be the case of getting the mobile version up and running and once it's released it should be the same as the release here we have on the desktop thus you'd be able to play online on a, on a desktop 
versus someone on an iPhone or someone on an Android tablet, etc. Anyway, that's all from me for now. Um, if you've got the Steam version, that should update automatically. If you use the GitHub version, you'll find links down below, along with lots of things about where to read the wiki and how to complain if something doesn't work, etc, etc. Hope that's helpful. Hope you have fun with it. Catch you next time. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.